Good morning and uh, good afternoon to those of you uh, that are on the uh, the East Coast. Uh, we're going to get uh, underway here uh, with the uh, the first here uh, of our uh, Carousel uh, Digital Signage Experts uh, Forum. Uh, so to kind of start off with, I uh, just want to kind of let you know who I am uh, to begin with. Uh, my name is Grant Gartland. I am the Carousel Digital Signage Trainer here at Tightrope Media Systems. Um, I've been a Carousel user since around 2002 or so. Um, I started when I was in high school. Uh, the high school uh, that uh, I, uh, I went to we used uh, some Carousel Digital Signage there. Um, and then uh, I became an, a Tightrope employee in 2009 working in support. And then over the last couple of years, uh, I've taken over the role as the Carousel Digital Signage Trainer. Um, so if you've ever had any training or scheduled any training, it's most likely been uh, with me within these last couple of years. So uh, that's kind of who I am, just so you understand where the information is coming from, at least uh, for today. Uh, our Digital Signage Experts Forum, so this webinar series um, that we're beginning here, I'm going to give you a little bit of information with regards to that. Tightrope Media Systems is introducing this new webinar series called the Signage Experts Forum uh, to cover advanced options in Carousel Digital Signage. We're really kind of hoping to inspire you through these webinars by introducing you to some advanced settings in Carousel, discussing new workflow options, helping you network with other end users, as well as keeping you up to date on our latest software integrations. It's also an opportunity for you to get to know our signage team a bit better. After all, you know, we really think of uh, you know, everybody here as a part of our tightrope family. And we always want to be here to help and we want, want you guys to kind of get to know us better. And we want to get to know you a little bit better uh, as well. So if you like what you hear today, um, I'm going to encourage you to subscribe to further updates uh, by emailing Michelle. Uh, she's our marketing coordinator. Um, also, feel free to suggest topics that you'd like to hear about in future forums. Um, and you can do that by taking a part of our post-webinar survey. Um, we'd we'll love to see your feedback. We want to know how we can serve you better um, and in the future um, through all of our free member benefits. So that's kind of a general overview of what we're looking at here with uh, this webinar series. Today's topic, though, is talking about unlimited carousel channels. Uh, so this is a, uh, a new, uh, kind of a new thing that we've, uh, we, we've just started here within uh, about the last month, month and a half or so. Um, and a lot of people, you know, kind of asked, well, you know, why are we going to, to unlimited carousel channels? One of the big reasons, lower startup costs for new systems. Previously, uh, when you were purchasing uh, a carousel, you would need to purchase your system, your, your units, based upon not only the total number of screens, but also the number of unique screens that you wanted to have. Now, we want to simplify that. Now you're just going to go through, you're going to count your TV screens, and you're all set. You know, that's what you're purchasing, is one piece of hardware for each one of those screens nothing else. Of course, this also helps to lower expansion costs for existing systems. Um, so you can make sure to, to kind of take, take, you know, take those benefits as well. So the same idea, just easier to add on for that new idea that you've got kicking around. You know, maybe a, a new department wants to have carousel. Well, now you don't have to go out and purchase two things. Purchase one, and you can get rolling again uh, with that carousel expansion. This also opens up options for existing systems, even without purchasing anything new from us. Um, we love seeing people use carousel to its fullest. That really is something that motivates us here um, at Tightrope. We love seeing the way that, that people are utilizing it and kind of new ways to, to integrate. And the old model made that a little difficult because it was hard to kind of expand and, and try new things in your system if you had to purchase your channels to do those things on. With this new model, we hope that every and any user can make Carousel work smarter for them, to be able to do that new thing that you just kind of want to try out, you want to test. One way that we can do that now with unlimited channels is the ability to build new channels anytime, 
in the background. So before where you were limited if you had say five channels and you wanted a new look, well you really couldn't do anything in Carousel without taking those other channels offline. Or what a lot of people did is they would just purchase one extra channel and they'd update you know channel A with the new version and then make that live and now go through and update channel B and kind of have to do a, a staggered rollout of a new look. With unlimited channels you don't have to do that anymore. You, know, you have that ability you can create five brand new channels, completely different look, new feel. Um, you know one of the you know maybe it's a, a new logo, a new you know branding within the company. You can create that brand new look and then just one day switch over all of your channels to that new look. Now of course first thing you're probably going to ask how do I get unlimited channels? Step one is you need to retrieve your current licensing information and your hardware ID from front door and that's the image that we're seeing here on the right hand side. So this is information that we need from your system in order to generate that new license key for you. So if you're familiar you know, with, with the system, you know about you know, kind of logging in, you're going to log into front door using your name and password, and instead of clicking on carousel, you're going to click into the server setup menu. Then you're going to click on licensing, and you'll see a page that looks like this. Simply select that text and copy and paste it into an email. I'm going to kind of emphasize copy and paste it. A screenshot can work, but it's much easier on our end if you just copy and paste the information. So copy and paste it, send it to an email to support at trms.com. Simply tell them that you want to update your license with unlimited channels. They will send back a new license key, and it will have 10,000 channels on it. So Technically, you are limited for right now to 10,000 channels, but if you use up all 10,000 of those, you can go ahead and ask us for another 10,000 channels. We're willing to give that to you. We figure 10,000 would be what, what most people need to start with. The new key they'll send back, you'll utilize that set new license key link that you see at the bottom of the image there. Paste in that key, verify that it's got everything that you had before, you hit OK, and now you've got essentially unlimited channels on your system. So it's a very easy process to get through. Just send us the information we need, we'll send you back a brand new key for your particular system. Now once that's completed, what are we going to end up doing? How do we really utilize uh, this on our system? So our next steps here we're going to take a look at are going to be in Carousel. We're going to talk a little bit about moving from a one channel five player system and this is just the example that we're using to a five channel five player system. So how that's going to kind of work, what are we going to need to do within Carousel? We'll talk about using our clone tool to help mimic those channels. How we share some zones, make things a little bit easier. How we can build priority lists for full screen alerts in Carousel. So I'm going to switch my screen here over here to my other monitor where I've got front door and I'm in Windows here and I'm actually just going to minimize this. We're essentially looking at my particular carousel server. And what I have open right now is I have open what we call the clone tool. Now, if you're not familiar with this, the clone tool is the quick and easy way to get carousel channels in or out of a carousel system. This is simply located on your computer, wherever your TRMS drive is, so either the, generally either the C or the D drive, within the TRMS folder, and then underneath tools. And there you'll find a little clone EXE application. Double click on that and it will open to this very simple application. It's got two buttons. You can import and you can export channels. So if we're moving from our single channel being shown on five players to five channels showing on five players, our first step is going to be to export our channel. By clicking on that, I get a list of my channels. 
choose the channel that I want to export, click on OK, and the system will ask me to save this somewhere on the desktop. Here you can see I've already exported this bank central channel. If I wanted to, my next step would be to tell the system to import this channel. It's going to ask me to confirm and it's going to pull out that package. It's going to extract everything. And essentially this channel package is everything. All of the zones, all of the media, all of the templates, all of the current bulletins that are running there, all packaged together into one file. Now what makes this clone tool very smart is that as it goes to bring it in, it will realize that these pieces are already on my system. It will see the channel name in the system and say, you know, I already see a channel with that name. What do you want to call this new channel? And I see that there are zones that already exist with these exact names. And there you're given a very special option in Carousel. You have the option to map zones. Mapping zones allows you to say, use that zone that's already on the system. Don't give me another new one. I don't need five entire copies. So here we can see here there's this conflict with my channel name. It says that this channel already exists. I can enter a new name if I'd like. I hit OK, and here's where I see my options for my zone. It sees that this bank crawl already exists. And by default, the system will map to that. So we'll use the existing crawl zone if I want to share that on this new channel. Otherwise, I can uncheck this and then choose a new name for this. It might be a different location, whatever I want to term that. I can do those things here in Carousel. Now, to kind of get an idea for what we're looking at here, I'm going to flip back to my other screen here. And here I've got a little preview set up of, of basically what we're looking at on our system here. We see six carousel channels here on our screen. And essentially that top channel here, labeled this single channel, if I click on that, you can see that's what our preview looks like. That's our essentially our you know, one channel that we were showing in five players. Well, for this specific example, the one channel that was being shown at five banks. Now, in all of my banks, I'd get the same information everywhere, every time. The same name, the same weather, the same time, the same news. Everything was always the same. With Carousel utilizing that clone tool, I can bring that channel back in and now I can create unique zones based upon each location. So now it might be kind of hard for you guys to, to see uh, with regards to the webinar, so I'll blow up this central channel here. And you'll notice in the top left hand corner that the name of that bank has changed. So that's the First National Bank of Tidy. And this is the central branch. If I'm in the east branch, I'm going to see the east branch there. So that zone is unique to that particular channel. It has the same look and the same feel as all the other ones, but it's simply different content here. And comparing that to other channels here, I've done the same thing with my time. So each of my time zones is based upon where that particular location is. Same thing with the weather. And if you wait for them to kind of rotate around the main content areas, where you might see invest today or save today, those each have unique content inside of them as well, based upon where they are. Kansas City and Hollywood and West. Or as Kansas City and the Central. Um, Hollywood and the West. Washington, D.C. for our East Branch. So coming back into Carousel, into our web UI here, I can kind of see how those changes look. So if I log in as this old bank user, here's what I would see. 
Now I've simply got access to to just my generic single bank zones. Those are the places that I can create content. It's very limited. As a new bank user, I have access to a much larger list. So for each one of my individual banks, I've got different places that I can change my content. My weather, my video or my main area, my banner and my time are each unique to each one of those specific locations. Now the time is slightly different here with uh, with Carousel. And I simply set up zones for each one of my uh, time zones that I'm in, Central, Eastern, Pacific. How that looks within the configuration of Carousel. For each of my channels, I've got listed here, I've got my bank, Central, East, North, South, West, and then original single channel. So for example, we'll take a look at our central bank channel and take a look at the layout. My list of zones here encompasses this bank central banner. So that's the banner zone up top here. If I wanted to replace this with something else, all I would need to do is simply delete this particular zone from this channel by clicking on delete. The system will ask me to verify that and now choose a new banner zone to replace the old one. So I could use any of the other, you know, Bank South or anything like that that I wanted to. I'll just go ahead and I'll put my Bank Central banner back in. And it slides right into that slot. Now if I wanted to do that with the time, there's one added step. Down here in the position, I need to tell the system where that zone goes. So again, I can delete this zone, taking note of its position being zero pixels from the top and 1,434 from the left. I delete that time zone, use my drop-down menu to add it back in, and then simply tell the system to utilize that exact same positioning again. So our limited channels now give us the ability to create channels that look the same to our viewers. So anybody walking into the bank won't necessarily realize that this isn't showing the exact same thing that I'm seeing at all these other locations. They all have the same look, the same feel, the same layout. I'm just changing the zones that are making that up. They're just duplicates of one another with slightly different variations on them. One of the other ways, and this is one of the ways that, that people tend not to think of right away, because it's not something they generally use every day, but the ability to configure our full screen alerts. So here I'm, you know, again, editing my bank central channel Within my channel setup, I can subscribe to multiple full screen alert zones. So for each of the channels that I've set up, I have a bank all full alert, and in this case, a bank central full alert. And I can have as many of these alerts as I would like. So for example, in this drop-down menu here, I have an emergency alerts zone that's available. I can add that, and I can drag through my priority to choose where this falls. So if I make that my top priority, my emergency alerts is my top priority. So no matter what happens, I can override everything else with that emergency alert zone. So again, these, these full screen alerts, subscribing, creating multiples of them, it's not something that's really going to be a, oh, this is going to help me every single day when I go to use the system. This is kind of one of those things like, you know, preparing for a disaster. You're not going to use it every day, but the day that you do need to use it, you're going to be glad that you had it set up. So kind of showing this in action a little bit are our full screen alerts here. We'll save our bank central. 
and utilizing my full screen alerts here, I'll come to my Bank Central full alert. And I'll simply create a new alert bulletin for that particular zone. We'll just go with a simple message here. And say our restrooms are currently out of order. Sorry for the inconvenience. And for the title, we'll just put restrooms closed. Just as I did before in any other system, preview, hit continue, schedule that alert. Now, if I only know it's going to be closed for a couple of days, I can do that. We'll leave it as is, it's an indefinite uh, closure, and hit OK. I'll flip you guys over to taking a look at our previews here. So we've got our, our six channels of preview uh, that we're seeing there. And now I see at my central location, my restrooms are closed. They're out of order. Sorry for the inconvenience. I'm not affecting my other four zones. Now we can imagine if I were to try and do that same thing in the single zone. If we were to override that, it would override at every location. But really, you know, my you know, uh, my restrooms aren't closed at all of my other locations. So it previously carousel you didn't really have that ability to really start minimizing getting the messages where they need to be to give the most effectiveness. Here we have that ability. Now once again, switching monitors, coming back into carousel, I still have I still have that alert running in my central bank. But now I move to my all bank system, my all full alert. Well, something's going on. You know, something massive happening. Zombies are coming. Take cover. So now if we've got a nationwide zombie alert happening, I can override all of my banks at the same time to give them that information. Again, switching back over to our previews here. Now this does take a little bit longer here with, uh, with my makeshift preview system. Uh, you know, when you are actual players, this happens much faster. But there, with the creation of one single bulletin, I was able to push the information that I needed to out to my banks in Laredo, Hollywood, Washington, Bemidji, Kansas City. Just like I said, working with these full screen alerts is something that you're not going to do every day. But the day that you do need it, and you've done that work ahead of time, it'll make the information so much easier to get out there. And this is kind of a, an extreme example with the, you know, the whole nation you know, needing to override. But even if you did have, you know, say, banks in each one of these states, you had four or five banks in a particular state or a particular county, being able to override all of those for a tornado warning or a thunderstorm warning not just banks, but schools, you know, doing this at a college campus. I can override a specific screen. I can override a floor of the screen. I can override a building, a site of campus, a whole campus, as needed. So the changes here that we've made within Carousel, giving you these options for your unlimited bulletins, just opens up your options for things you were already able to do in Carousel. You, know, you always had the opportunity to subscribe to multiple full screen alerts. Or if you really didn't have multiple channels, it, you know, it didn't benefit you much. 
So we're really opening up the benefits for things that you already had access to in Carousel. Those abilities to use our clone tool to bring in multiple channels, the ability to share our zones. So now with multiple channels sharing information across all of those different screens. So if I turn off my, my full screen alerts here at all of my, my given locations, or turn those all back to their, their normalcy. In my zones, you'll see that across my all banks, they all share our you know, events zone. I can create new content in that events zone. I'll even create it as an alert to make it easy to find. I can create our you know, photo gallery. Say, you know, here is our new mascot. You know, come here, find a picture of our of our new mascot. Upload that into Carousel. Again, all of the things we've been able to do in Carousel before, uploading content, customizing it, overriding portions of the screen, scheduling. And now utilizing shared zones, I've again created one particular bulletin in just one portion of the screen. And now I have that information pushed out to multiple locations. So I can show everybody at every location, here's our new mascot. But they still get to see their time and their weather for their particular location. So that's really what, uh, what the basis is for this updating with unlimited channels in Carousel is to help you as users unlock things that you were able to do before, but to use them more fully. To really get everything out of your Carousel system that you expect. So kind of our, our next steps uh, within Carousel. Any more information that you might need? Speak to sales. They can get you up any information you need on updated costs for adding additional endpoints. If you were thinking about adding new players, but you know, the cost was too high, you didn't want to purchase new channels for them as well, now those costs are lowered. Speak to sales about finding out if that's something that's you know, fitting in your budget now. Work with support to get your updated license key to allow for those unlimited channels. Again, just copy and paste your licensing information in the email to support and they'll send you back a brand new key. YouTube from Tightrope Media Systems, or at least, sorry, I should say our YouTube channel. We don't actually provide YouTube. But there you can see uh, all of our videos, um, and in the future, including a copy of uh, this and other webinars. You know, it takes about a day or so, you know, a couple more days to get actually loaded into YouTube. Um, but do know that that information will be there. So that's kind of where we're, uh, where we're at with the, the new unlimited channels here for Carousel. Uh, so I'm going to uh, invite Michelle uh, to open up her microphone, and she's going to let us know some of the questions um, that our users have asked. And uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully I've got all the answers here for those questions. Thank you, Grant. Um, yes, my name is Michelle Ali Marati. I'm the marketing coordinator for Tightrope Media Systems. Um, and as Grant mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, if you would like to subscribe to our Signage Experts Forum, you can email me. I posted my email to the chat window earlier on, um, and I've already received a few emails from folks asking to subscribe to future forums. We're excited about that. So just wanted to remind you um, to let us know <laughs> if you want to continue to see more webinars like this and also please do give us your feedback so we can continue to make these better this is our very first one so we're always we're looking for your feedback to make sure you're getting the most out of these um, we do have some questions coming in the first question that we had was from tom asking about if all this information still applies to bright sign players 
Yes. Um, you know, Carousel certainly has um, has all those same abilities for you know sharing zones, um, things like that. Really, most of the the change with the unlimited channels is really happening more on the server side. So the aspect of of creating these channels and and sharing the zones, things like that. The bright sign players are just simply looking at one of those particular channels to see. So, it, like like you asked, everything. So we've seen here today also applies to the bright sign players that are running off of a carousel server. So, Tom, I hope that answers your question. If you um, have anything else to add, please add that to the questions. Um, we have a question from Vicki. Uh, what is the easiest way to have some channels share zone information between the channels um, that have been created? Example, uh, Central Bank East may share info. Um, I don't know, Grant, I'll let you take this one. It sounds like we're, we're talking about just sharing some zones between multiple channels, which maybe this was asked earlier on and we already covered it, but um, maybe just go over it one more time. Um, so, so, Vicky, what it kind of sounds like you're asking is, is you know, something that's maybe uh, an event that's going on that the central bank and the east bank are both participating in. And maybe it's you know two banks that are in the same city um, that are um, that are partnering um, on something. To do that, you know, for example, use your examples of, of east and central here. I'll come to my east bank and you know go to my video zone. Let's imagine underneath my manage bulletins area here, you know, that you know this save today bulletin was something that I created for that particular event. Very easily in Carousel, I could simply copy move this bulletin, and if my user account had access, I could tell the system to very quickly duplicate this bulletin in another zone, and then tell the system that, okay, now I want to put this in my central video zone. So now a copy of that would be playing in that particular zone. Another way... Um, that people have done this, and especially if uh, your user account doesn't have access in both the central and the east, is again underneath that copy move option. The last option is to create a bulletin package. And this is just a little zip file that you download. So this little zip file that I've just told my system to download, I can now take that zip file, email it to, you know, my... Uh, you know, the, the person who does my job at the central bank. And now they can use the uploaded tab here in Carousel underneath new bulletin uploaded to upload that bulletin package back in. It's the exact same bulletin, the same media, the same schedule. So it's kind of that offline, quote, offline way of sharing bulletins within Carousel. So those are kind of two ways to, to share content um, there uh, via Carousel. Or, um, as we saw, the ability to share those zones. You know, if it's information that you know every bank would need, then put it in a zone that is shared on every bank. And you certainly can have multiple levels within a particular channel. You could have zones unique to that bank, a zone unique to that region. There's multiple banks in that region, and a zone dedicated to information for all banks. Hope that answers your question, Vicki. So we actually I have another question from Vicky that I think was meant to clarify, and I, I think you sort of covered this, but it's the idea of clarifying the language, like what we mean by a zone. So I think you know folks who have only ever managed one channel in the past um, might think of a zone a little differently than people who are managing content on multiple channels. Um, so, you know, in, in Vicky's question, it sounds like she understood a zone to be just a part of a page that was set aside by pixel size. Um, so translating that to, you know, a shared piece of your channel that's, you know, getting shared from location to location. Can you just clarify that for people? Yeah, so, so really if you kind of want to think about, you know, everything that we've kind of seen here, um, and, and if you've ever done a training with me, this is the, the analogy that I use for all these, these moving pieces. Um, you know, our server essentially is our painter within our system. Um, our players are picture frames that we use to display content. 
and our channel, which is essentially what we're looking at here inside of this web browser right now, this is the central uh, channel, that is a large piece of canvas. With Carousel, we've cut that canvas into zones. And as I refresh here, oh, and actually, I should probably switch you guys over to actually see what I'm showing here. <laughs> Sorry about that. There you go. So like I said, this whole thing uh, we'd refer to as our as our channel. That's our, our large piece of canvas. If I refresh here, you can kind of see that it loads in these pieces. You get these boxes that fill in. Those boxes are our zones. So essentially what we've done is we've cut our canvas into smaller pieces. Those small pieces of canvas are our zones. The bulletins, or some people like to use the term slides or the term pages that we create for each one of our events or the weather or our new mascot. All of those things are, we refer to as bulletins. Those are the paint. Those are the pictures, the images that we actually see filling the screen. And so Grant, um, for you know, someone who's only ever managed one channel, then a zone would just be a part of the larger canvas that you know, you've designated a particular pixel size for. Um, if you're sharing zones, um, do folks need to have the same pixel size on the other channel that where that zone is being shared? Do they always have to be the same size? Generally speaking, uh, yes. You would want them um, to be the same size, and especially if you're utilizing the same layout. Um, now, an advanced thing that you can do in Carousel, which, which takes some planning, um, is you do have the ability, if you wanted to, to take a zone um, that is one size and share it on another channel. But generally, you only want to do that in a smaller size. You don't want to try and make it larger. When you try and blow things up, they're not going to look as good. But if you wanted to kind of size something down um, to display on another channel, you certainly could do that as well. So that's a, kind of a, an advanced type thing that we might talk about in a, in a future webinar or, or maybe some sort of other video. Yes, and I think we have talked about doing a future webinar that covers design uh, issues that come up for people as they're putting their channel content together. Um, so Vicki, I hope that answers your questions. If there's anything that we didn't quite touch on, feel free to add another question. Um, but we'll go ahead and move on to Tom's question. Um, he wants to know if you, if he can also see the the multi-channel view that you created, um, where you could see all of the different channels at the different locations at once, is that something that they have access to, or is that something you made especially for this? Um, right, and I knew somebody was going to ask that when I decided to, to kind of go with this. Um, this is not something that's built into Carousel. Um, this is something I designed specifically for this webinar um, just to make it uh, a little easier. Um, you do have the ability to see um, all of your channels, just not in kind of this uh, kind of heads-up display. Um, so within Carousel, you know, from your uh, main menu when you're in a particular zone, clicking on the Configure button, and then channels. Here you've got you know, all of these little uh, uh, magnifying glasses, and each of those allows you to open up this web preview to fill that particular, uh, you know, fill the screen with that particular channel. Uh, this little, the little preview that I designed, um, you know, is you know, if you're familiar with HTML um, and all, it's pretty simple um, to build that. Essentially, um, and for kind of the techie side here, um, essentially what I did is I just built six iframes that are running on side, of, you know, in a web page that are each pointing to the particular uh, web previews um, that we wanted to look at today. Um, so if you've got somebody that's relatively familiar with HTML, you know, at your particular place, you pretty easily could probably give them that information. They might be able to build this for you. Great. So, Tom, um, I hope that helps you out. Um, we've got a question from... David, about upgrade costs for the new server versions. Um, I don't know. I assume he means actual players and not software, um, like upgrading to the new players. And David, please clarify if that's not what you mean. 
Um, I can tell you this, David, uh, the best thing to do is going to be either contact your dealer or contact sales. So that's sales at trms.com. Um, and they can get you the information with regards to um, pricing, whether that's upgrading, you know, from a, from an old unit to getting newer hardware. If you just want to replace it, we've got some some upgrading paths um, available that way. If you just want to expand um, those types of things, or even doing those same things with a server um, that you might have. Um, but just note that everything that we really kind of talked about here today, with regards to the unlimited channels, there's no cost associated with that. You don't have to buy new software, you don't have to buy new players. Um, you know, this is just a licensing change that we can make on existing systems for free. But it gives you that ability and a little bit easier access um, in some cases to kind of expand your system, add new players, things like that. But sales at trms.com or your dealer are going to be the, the best ones to get you information with regards to, to current pricing. Yeah, and, and David, if you were talking about um, upgrading your server software or your player software, um, that would be something that would depend on the status of your assurance plan, I believe. Um, so you would, again, need to contact someone about that. Um, so the next question is from Jim. Can you set up a crawl zone to function the same way as a regular alert zone in order to override other crawls and get emergency type messages out? No. Uh, unfortunately, there's there's within the, the carousel ecosystem, there really is no such thing as an alert crawl. Um, uh, we don't really have them here um, just because my web previews don't allow me to, to preview crawls. Um, but uh, what certainly some people have done, um, you know, is they'll, you know, they'll use a, cr they'll have a crawl zone attached to all of their channels, but only use it in an emergency information. Kind of similar to how most, um, you know, uh, broadcast TV stations, you know, they don't normally have a crawl on the screen. You just use it when you need to get information out. Um, when that's the case, the crawl zone disappears in Carousel. Um, but unfortunately, unlike the alert zones. You don't have the, that ability to subscribe to multiple crawls. You are limited to one crawl uh, per channel. Okay. I um, hope that answers your question, Jim. Uh, we have a question from Lorenzo asking, is there a specific version of the software that is required to take advantage of these new features and the new channel licensing? Um, really, the channel licensing would be available for um, Carousel 5.0 and above, so really where we introduced the idea um, of channels within the system. Um, you'd be able to do that. Um, the multiple full screen alerts, I, I can't remember for sure. I should have looked it up in my notes ahead of time. I want to say that's like Carousel 6.2. Or, or, or 6 3, somewhere in there is when we added that ability to do the multiple kind of subscription levels um, of full screen alerts. Um, but definitely, if you're on, you know, you know, 6 4, um, you know, 6 5 area, um, you'll have all of those abilities. We have uh, a question from David, and um, he asks Will there be a way to schedule full screen alerts in an easier manner? For example, um, duplication every five minutes in a channel. We'd like to have a regular sign interruption to break up the static sign, uh, but right now we have to program every slot, which gets repetitive and costly in terms of time. Um, I know that is something um, that, that has come up before, um, that, that is a feature that has been requested, um, and I know that it is um, you know, something that, that we've certainly talked about for releases, um, but most likely it's it's not anything that's going to be in the, the immediate future. Um, you know, we do have a, a large um, update coming soon, um, Carousel 7.0, um, which is going to be a, a nice whole new look um, for the system. Um, but it'll probably be sometime after that 7.0 update when we would um, make any large changes um, to the scheduling of bulletins. There's a lot to be said there with, with kind of how, how to really integrate that, you know, whether you schedule that in the, in the full screen alerts or do you schedule it in the normal zone and, and make those attachments. So it's, while on the surface it may seem easy, there's, there are a lot of logistics um, to deal with something like that. But I can tell you it's been requested um, and it's, it's something that uh, 
that is on our uh, our roadmap um, in the future, but not the immediate future. Great. Okay. So um, next we have a question from John. Can a CG two hundred and fifty output two separate channels at once, like one out of the composite out and one out of the VGA out? Um, short answer, no. Um, there are some ways that you could kind of get around doing that um, within a system. Technically, what you would end up doing is create a single channel um, that would be displayed upon both of those, kind of extended across, um, and then have your zones broken up on each of those, but you would lose any sort of full screen alert uh, functionality. Uh, one of the other limitations, just to note um, with this, um, with the unlimited channels, um, is that it is something that's uh, only for our carousel digital signage uh, systems. Uh, so it's kind of a function of the, the server itself. Right, that's important to note. Um, because w if you're using a broadcast version of carousel, then you're limited by the number of channels you have through your video server, right? Right, yeah. right. Um, okay. We have David asking, do we need any additional licensing to add bright sign players in the new licensing model? So we're still talking endpoints, just bright sign endpoints. Yeah, there's no um, there's no difference essentially in the in the licensing. Um, you're still purchasing a, a player license um, as you would if you were adding a, a 250 or a 330 or anything else like that. Um, there is a very small separate piece of software that you just have to install on the server ahead of time. Um, and when you purchase the bright sign units, you know from us, there's information in the box with regards to that, or it's also available within our support page. So trms.com/support. It's got the information. It's a very easy process um, to be done. It just has to be done once before you try and connect up those bright sign units. Otherwise, they, they don't know what they're talking to. I just really want to thank everybody for uh, for stopping by today, and I hope uh, hope to continue to see uh, you know, everybody at the at the rest of our uh, signage experts forum webinars.